Therapy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 44 here on What About Therapy. I'm Enoch Fossum, and I'm a certified mindfulness life coach. And I'm Austin Ivey, and I'm certified in the basics of acceptance and commitment therapy, and we're both going to school to be marriage and family therapists. And today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about the hardest barriers that people run into when they're trying to make positive change in their lives. So stick with us. All right, welcome back. Episode 44. 44. It's been a minute since we've recorded. So, yeah. Because I went on a trip to Hawaii, which was absolutely amazing, and everyone should feel jealous. It was fantastic. <laughs> Anyone who's been to Oahu or just any of the Hawaiian islands will know why. It's just super cool. Like, you haven't been there, right? No. Was he was telling me about too. it, though, and I was just frothing at the mouth. It's so cool. About some of the food and drinks that he oh, had. It was and... amazing. Pure sugarcane drinks. Oh, like man. Some authentic Hawaiian, like, chicken katsu. Like, Dang. If anyone's been to Mobetas or, like, LNLs, those, like, Hawaiian places, like a Utah thing. Yeah. A lot of our listeners are from Utah. But if you're not, it's, like, Hawaiian food, Polynesian food, but it was authentic from Hawaii, and that's my favorite type of food. Mm. So I was just in heaven. It was great. Mm. And it's some really good um, acai bowls. I love uh-huh. acai bowls now. Some people eat them as meals. Yeah. I mean, it's like a dessert. Is it supposed to be a dessert? I think it's supposed to be a meal. Okay. But I see them as a dessert. Oh. <laughs> my, my my wife would see them as a meal. Okay. Because, I mean, she doesn't eat as much as I do. I eat like a cow. <laughs> Three cows. No, Just but it's, grass. they're really good because I had, I was way too manly to eat them for a while. Oh. I've accepted my manliness and I'm very secure You've in my masculinity. Humbled. Yeah, very nice. And I'm okay with ordering and saying that I like acai bowls. <laughs> and, so, and they were really good there because everything was like fresh, like grown in Hawaii. Yeah. And so it was really cool. Like the acai was from there. My anyway. first, uh, my first semester, one of, in one of my classes, there was a girl that would come in every single day with an acai bowl. Oh, really? Every day. They're expensive. That's yeah. impressive. Like, I know, like really eight expensive. bucks, if oh, not more. Way than more that. now. Yeah. Really? Like, with inflation. I guess this was this was pre-COVID. Yeah. But yeah. They're way. They they used to be about that much, from my understanding, because my wife used to buy them before things started to go up, like okay. price wise. Yeah. It used to be like nine dollars for like the smaller regular one at the place here in Pleasant Grove. And now it's like eleven dollars for that one. It's it's crazy how much more it is. And that's like the basic one. It's not even the custom yeah. one. That's, yeah. It has like two or three things on top. Still good though. Still that's good. That's for sure. Nothing but gains. I love the granola in there. That's my favorite part. Oh, you know, it's like I mixed know. with the fruit and stuff. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Anywho, that was what I was doing for the next week. And so if we're a little rusty, we apologize. It's been a week. Usually we record twice a week or two episodes a week. Yeah, and we do apologize. We totally dropped the ball on the what about episode last week. Yeah. We thought we recorded enough, but we didn't. And I was looking around Wednesday night <laughs> and Thursday on my computer, like, where's that episode? We recorded it, I swear. It's here somewhere. But I just got it mixed up with another episode that we recorded about being addicted to your relationship. Mm-hmm. And that shows you know, how far back we recorded. Yeah, that we but, recorded some episodes like two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. So. Yeah, but our What About series isn't done. We're going to still keep it going we just dropped the ball on that one so yeah it was just we both kind of we were texting each other and like i was getting over the time difference still and i had like a long week I actually got sick too i had oh. a sinus infection i don't know how i get them all the time and Welcome so i've been to sick this week too Utah. yeah coming back to the dry air Ugh, boy yeah and the allergies but yeah so we both were just out of it last week school's been killing us too yeah we've been yeah up to our eyebrows in school it's yep. been insane the summer semester is not cool right now it's yeah. It's a lot for me to yeah, take a, a bunch of advanced classes right now. I yeah. wish I wouldn't have done that all one <laughs> semester. So it's like advanced English, advanced math, advanced psychology. Yeah. <laughs> Bad idea. You'll thank yourself later. I will. Because now I have a lot more easy classes in the future. Right. But anywho, we apologize. Um, we'll try not to drop the ball. We probably will. We're not going to claim to be perfect. We'll probably do something wrong in the future. Like, say, multiple episodes are the same episode number. <laughs> like episode 41. There were three of those. I yeah, think. it's great. Or two. <laughs> if you're paying enough attention to find that, thank you so much for paying yeah. so close attention. <laughs> but today yeah. on episode 44, that's correct, right? That's 40, yeah. yeah, episode 44. 44, we have another acronym for you guys. Wow. <laughs> Who would have guessed the What About Therapy podcast <laughs> would be doing an acronym? But we were talking about it earlier today via text that does that that is act in a nutshell it's acronyms and parables yeah so like that's the way it was developed and that's the way that it continues to grow and get learned and taught by people like that teach it it's really popular because of the 
lot of the parables, mm-hmm. a lot of the acronyms, because they're easy to remember and, and they're, they're really effective. helpful. Yeah. yeah, they're like they easy to remember long term as well. Like I, right. I still remember the acronyms that I first learned when I first started learning about it. Yeah, it's been a, over a year now, so um, it's really great stuff. So we have another one today, and it's from the book Russ Harris wrote called The Happiness Trap. We've talked about this book multiple times. It's on Audible. It's on Amazon. If you want to finally read it for yourself, I highly recommend it. I am just about done with it. I've been saying that for a while now, but I have a hard time getting through audiobooks this semester. Anyway, it's really great, and in this chapter he's talking about, I believe it's chapter 24, if you do want to go read it yourself, if you have it or want to read it, I think it's chapter 24, he's talking about overcoming challenges and setting goals for yourself and how that can be difficult for a lot of people, really for most people. I know for me it's hard, especially when you're trying to make positive change in your life and make changes that are going to benefit you and make your life better. And he talked about these barriers, and he calls them hard barriers, not only because they're difficult to manage, but also because that's the acronym. The acronym is H-A-R-D, and that's what we're going to be going over today. And so those four words, just briefly, and we're going to summarize them as we go, are hooked, avoiding, remoteness, and doubtful. That's your little sneak peek for the rest of the time. (laughs) So we can get right into it, though, and start with the first one, which is the reason, the first reason that people can't overcome challenges or have a hard time making positive change is because they get hooked to thoughts. We've talked about this a lot in the past with cognitive, um, fusion, cognitive fusion. That was what it's called. Yeah. And unhooking skills and things like that. We've talked about it. And this is the same thing. Being hooked to thoughts is what Russ Harris calls it. It's, or so when you're hooked to thoughts, you're in two different modes. It's obey mode and, um, struggle mode. And obey is when you listen to every thought and you just get taken by every whim, every, everywhere your thoughts take you, you just listen to it and believe it. And struggle mode is when you challenge every single thought and you try to fight with it and win it and fight back with positive thoughts and all these things. You're doing everything to keep it out of your life. So being hooked is either obeying or struggling, and sometimes it's both. And so that is kind of the context behind being hooked. And when it comes to overcoming barriers in our lives or challenges, we can get hooked to thoughts such as, you're a failure. You are mm-hmm. not good enough to make this change in your life. Like, let's say you, and let's say you're trying to eat healthier. That's a pretty common one. I feel like a lot of people do, and I'm even trying to do it myself, that you are trying to eat more vegetables, more fruits, eat less calories, eat less sugar, whatever it is that you're focusing on. You find yourself failing a lot. Like, let's say one day you go to your favorite ice cream place and you order your own ice cream, and it's like 2,000 calories just for the ice cream. And it's meant to be shared by four people. Not to say that I've ever done this. I've definitely never done that before. <laughs> um, and then you leave there thinking to yourself, you're a failure. Like you, why did you do that? Why do you, why does anyone ever do that? What's wrong with me? And in that moment, you're hooked. You're listening to those thoughts, either obeying with it or struggling with it and struggling with it. Like, no, I'm, I'm good. Like there was just one thing I'll, I'll do better tomorrow. I'll, I'll never eat ice cream again. All these different things you struggle with that thought or you obey you just like, yeah, I, I am a failure. Maybe I should just stop dieting. I'm not up to this. And so that's the first barrier that people run into when they're trying to make positive change in their life is they get hooked to these negative thoughts or feelings that our brain throws at us. Yeah. Yeah, when I think of cognitive fusion or getting hooked by our thoughts, I always think of the Buddhists, how they say the majority of our suffering comes from within, mm-hmm. comes from our thoughts and what we think. And that's so true. I mean, we all get hooked to thoughts now and again, some of us more than others. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us get hooked to thoughts that last a long time and they're really, really destructive and harmful. And it's really hard to unhook ourselves the longer that hook is in. And so, yeah, I mean, I definitely see why this is going to be the beginning of the hard barrier is first understanding your thoughts, understanding, being hooked to them. And if you want to learn how to defuse from them, we have a couple episodes Mm -hmm. on that. Off the top top of my head, I don't know which number or which episodes they are, but I'm sure you can scroll through, listen to all of them. That's, that's on you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's what we're saying is just go back and you're going to have to listen to all of them. If you haven't listened to it, you better go back. Um, Yeah. yeah, but we, we had a pretty, pretty good episode on that. I remember really enjoying that one. Um, and I, one thought that I had that Russ Harris talks about the reason behind it is like, why do these thoughts come? Like, why do these, why does this happen? And in the episode, we 
previously had on this on cognitive fusion and unhooking, we said, and Russ Harris says, um, that your brain is not your enemy, but your brain is like a really good friend who's trying way too hard to help and ends up making things worse. Mm-hmm. And so I go back to the ice cream analogy and eating overeating or cheating on your diet, whatever it is. Um, the reason that your brain sends that out of you is because, um, it's trying to help you keep to your goal that you set. Like so either subconsciously or consciously, it's trying to help you. It's thinking that it's helping you. Yeah. And it's just not very good at that. Our brains are really good at keeping us alive, but they're not really good at helping us with our goals. Right. So that's why it kind of comes. And that's why we struggle with it so much. And so, like we said, if you want to learn how to get over that barrier, the, the, the H to being hooked, go back and listen to, or look up unhooking skills mm-hmm. from look, look up unhooking Russ Harris on Google. Yeah. And he has actually really good resources. He has, an, he has his own website with guided meditations and with um, like infographics. And stuff like that on how to learn unhooking skills. And there's one called Dropping Anchor, which is a really good one that you could learn. Mindfulness. And, uh, even if you looked up dropping, dropping Anchor Mindfulness on YouTube, there's some pretty good yeah. ones by Russ Harris. Yeah. So that's a really good way to unhook is through mindfulness and presence meditation. Yeah. I love that. On to the next one. The A is avoiding. Now, avoiding what? Avoiding discomfort. We've talked about this a lot too where... When it comes especially to anxiety, there is so much anxiety around anxiety. Yeah. (laughs) So what I mean by that is if you have social anxiety, we use that a lot, that example. If you have social anxiety of going to a party, you are anxious about feeling anxious about going to this party. Mm -hmm. And so you don't go because you're avoiding discomfort at this party. And let's say you have a value of connection, a value of being social, then you're not living by your values. And that is also unhelpful and can be harmful when you don't actually work towards your values because of just avoiding discomfort. And so it's an interesting concept, avoiding discomfort, avoiding being discomfort, uh, 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 avoiding... (laughs) Avoiding discomfort. Avoiding being uncomfortable. Mm, there we go. There you go. Uncomfortable because you don't want to be uncomfortable. Mm. Yeah. As weird as that sounds, that's what happens. What a paradox. Because like you, you, you know you're going to get anxious at the party. Right. So you get anxious about the fact that you're going to be at the party. And then you start to get anxious about the fact that you're anxious, that you might be anxious at the party. Mm. And so you decide, well, it's best if I just don't go. It's such Let's a dilemma. avoid the discomfort. Yeah. You turn away from your values. And Russ Harris and Stephen Hayes, the founder of Acceptance and Commitment Therapy that Russ Harris bases everything off of, he calls those toward moves and away moves. Toward moves are decisions that we make that are typically towards discomfort, but move us towards our values. And then there's things that are away moves that might keep us from feeling discomfort, but move us away from our values, which will eventually, like over time and the net worth of decisions, of a worse long-term effect. But yeah. the towards moves, you might feel discomfort, you might feel anxious, all the natural, normal, and sometimes helpful things, but the net gain will be very good because you've turned towards your values. And so that's yeah. the problem with, with the A, is that you it's usually you avoiding or betraying your, your values just because you don't want to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And we've said this before on the podcast a lot, is that there's no growth in the comfort zone and no comfort in the growth zone. Mm-hmm. And so when you look at like challenges or goals that you've made in your life, if you're setting a goal that's worth it, you have to expect to feel uncomfortable. Like Enoch and I both have a goal to become therapists and to be successful therapists at that by adding a lot of extracurricular activities in our lives like this podcast. And it's difficult. It's really uncomfortable to yeah. balance our time with homework time with our wives and our families and then this podcast and then all the other things that we want to do with our lives and we're young and we are able to do those things and it's really uncomfortable sometimes to be able to do that and find the time but it's worth it because we care about what we're doing surprise surprise we care about this podcast (laughs) and so that's kind of what it looks like when it comes to goals and challenges or positive change is when you think you can't expect to have good change in your life and also have comfortability in that comfort comfortability comfortability is that a word? Yeah. Those two things usually can't exist in the same world. They, it's like magnets when you try to put the same sides together. They like push away from each other. Yeah. Comfort 
and positive growth typically don't stick together very well. If, if they do, it's very little and it doesn't last very long. Right. So that, I guess that's the way that I look at it. Yeah. You can't live in the same... You have to choose one world to live in. It's either the growth world or the comfort world. Yeah. And so you have to choose which one you want. Yeah. That's interesting because it, it also depends on where you're at in life. That's right? a good point, yeah. Like for us right now, there's going to be so much discomfort for at least, at least like another six years. Yeah, until we're practicing until we're and out of school. Until we're fully licensed. Yeah. And it's like, is it six? It's like five and a half. Yeah, to fully license. Yeah, at least five Yeah, and a half. so there's going to be so much discomfort in that time. But later down the road, when we're 20 years into therapy, we can still grow and there's not going to be as much discomfort. I guess you could say there's still going to be some discomfort, mm-hmm. obviously, when you want to grow, but it's just going to be less. And so depending on where you're at, depending on what's happening in your life right now, is going to determine how much discomfort you're going to feel according to what you're going after. Yeah. And how long you've been doing it for and how used yeah. to it you are. Yeah. And that's kind of what Russ Harris goes at in the book when he's talking about overcoming this specific barrier is to first of all, be learn to be compassionate with yourself. And second of all, um, start small, mm-hmm. like make effective, yeah. like most people have learned what a smart goal is in high school. And we're not going to go over it right now, Yeah. but make goals that are, that are applicable and also that are small enough for you to obtain, but are yeah. also going to push you in the right direction. Yeah. Cause you make these broad giant goals that are unattainable. Of course you're going to fail and you're going to not want to do it anymore. And so he talks about attainable goals that are going to push you along enough to where you're uncomfortable, but also attainable. So like, um, Sygotsky's zone of proximal development. You have to be just enough into the zone of uncomfort, uncomfortability. I don't know the word. Discomfort. The, the, the zone of discomfort. There we go. <laughs> just enough to where you yeah. don't give up, but also enough to where you see some growth. Yeah. And that's where you might be, but then eventually you can move further and further into that circle where there's more discomfort, but yeah. you're okay with it. It's just like getting into a pool, like a, a water, or like I was just in Hawaii getting in the ocean. It's cold at first, but once you're slowly gone into it, it's past your knees and it's up past your waist and now it's up to your neck, you don't really feel the cold anymore. It's still the same temperature. The water's still the same temperature, but your body just acclimates to it. Yeah. It becomes used to it. It doesn't notice it anymore. It says, oh, this isn't a threat anymore. It's okay. Let's put this on the back burner and we'll just, you can just have fun now. And that's kind of the same yeah. thing when you set goals. You just have to slowly inch into it until you stop recognizing it as a threat. And then it's really just, it's just there. Right. So One of my favorite quotes from Tony Robbins is people underestimate overestimate what they can do in a year and they underestimate what they can do in a decade. Yeah. And so the small steps is definitely where it's at. You know, that proximal development, just be in that zone of discomfort enough to where obviously, like when we say discomfort, we're not saying you have anxiety every day. Yeah, that's not. We're not saying you have anxiety doing everything. It's just going to be a little uncomfortable. You might feel some pushback from your brain just a little bit. Yeah, I feel a little pushback like, oh, I don't want to talk to this person right now. Mm Mm-hmm. Or, um, I don't want to go to the store because there's people there or whatever it is. Well, I don't even, I don't even want to go through the drive through right now. Cause I, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to work out. It's going to make me sore the next day. I don't want to work out because people are going to be staring at me. Like, right. Insert a goal and you're going to find a million problems that could come along with it. Yeah. You just have to choose how much of that goal you can do without overwhelming yourself and having a panic attack over it. Yeah. And that's going to be up to you because everyone's different. We can't just say do this and it'll be enough. That's going right. to be case by case and if you have a therapist they might be able to help you with that yeah so start small and be easy on yourself and pay attention to the the discomfort that you try to avoid whether that's unconscious or consciously because i know i personally avoid discomfort unconsciously a, a ton like i change the route i drive or walk to avoid certain people things me too uh, just to avoid discomfort. And obviously, you know, that can be a good thing, but that's just an example of unconsciously avoiding discomfort. And so just take a look at your life, see what you do, see if you avoid anything, and start to go to it. Yeah, it's... Amen. I have no more to add to that. So... Hallelujah. H is hooked right. to thoughts. A is avoiding discomfort. Now we're on to R, which is a remoteness from your values. So you're choosing change or goals or some type of new thing to add into your life that is separated from what you truly care about and what truly means has meaning to you. So I guess, for example, you want to 
let's say you want to start reading more because you just want to, let's say you have a value of, of knowledge Mm -hmm. and you want to learn things, but you think you need to be reading a certain amount of books every Mm -hmm. day. Like I need to be reading at least one book a week and that's your goal. But the value is knowledge and you're not going to be able to pull a whole lot of knowledge from a book if you're just speed reading it. Or let's say like, let's say I want to read two books a week because you can pull knowledge from reading a book a week. That's what I was doing for a little while. Yeah. Until summer hit me. And and then summer semester. (laughs) Yeah. So let's say maybe two books a week and like, I'm going to do it because it's possible and I can do it. Yeah. But that's kind of remote from your values because your value isn't efficiency. Your value isn't speed reading. Your value is knowledge. And so maybe you can pull knowledge from it, but let's say you aren't in the situation and you come up with this barrier where you're just having a hard time getting the motivation to read or getting through the three books. That's because you're, you're fighting against your values of knowledge. And that's just one example. Let's say another one is you have a goal of, let's say you, you think that you need to have a goal of dropping 10 pounds and it's because you just think you need to look a certain way, but you don't necessarily have a value of fitness. And let's say you have more of a value of, of, I don't know. I'm not even going to that right now, but you don't have a value of fitness very much as maybe someone who goes to the gym every day because they like just the way they feel when they work out and they like the whole workout culture and going to the gym and all that. And that's because that's their, that's their value. If it's not your value, you're going to have a really hard time with it. And we had a episode on this around new year's is why goals fail. And this yeah. is a big one because people make goals that are what was the word we used? They socially make, compliant? They make socially compliant goals. And then we use this other word, other phrase that they make goal-driven values or value. They make goal-driven values. They choose mm, values yeah. that are goal-driven rather than choosing goals, goals that are value-driven. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to decide and choose beforehand. You have to find the value first and then set goals based off of that value. Yeah. So that way you're always moving towards something that you truly care about. And that's yeah. what this whole part of the acronym is all about. Yeah. You didn't think you could get through a whole episode on acceptance and commitment therapy without talking about values. Never. No. It'd be kind of pointless. <laughs> that's what it's all about is values. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a huge gym junkie. Okay, and people are like, yo, Enoch, how do you go to the gym every day all the time? Like, I don't know how you do it, how you find the motivation. And I'm just like, it's what I value, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I value fitness. I value being healthy. I value working out, being able to do things I want to do, whether that's run or be capable to lift a heavy boulder while I'm camping. I don't know what it is. But that's what gets me going. Like, I can just turn on autopilot, go towards my values, and I'll go to the gym. I'll go for a run. I'll go bike whatever it is. And that's the cool thing about values is if I have a value of fitness, I can do whatever I want under the fitness umbrella to fulfill that value Mm -hmm. or to go towards it. So if I go on a bike ride and I'll beat myself up because I don't say, Oh, I didn't hit the weights today. I didn't hit my goal. Like that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about being fit. And So I can go on a bike ride. I can go for a run. I can go fishing with Austin. Mm -hmm. I can, again, you get the idea, whatever it is. And people, I have a hard, I have a hard um, thing around motivation because people are like, I don't have the motivation. Like, well, it's not about the motivation. Mm -hmm. It's not about feeling good to go do something. It's about living your life in accordance with your values and naturally you'll start to go that way Mm -hmm. if it's something you truly value and obviously there are going to be some hard barriers right which we're going to have to go through when you go towards values but that's the secret is finding what you value and setting your goals which we'll talk about here in a minute around values and not the other way around like austin was just saying i think you bring up a good point there too is that like if people I think the miscon misconception or the maybe the trap someone can get into listening to this aspect that I'm, I don't have motivation because I'm not my goals aren't value based. You're not going to get motivation just because your goals are value based, but it's going to be easier to make those decisions. And just because something is value based doesn't mean motivation is just going to appear. You still have to use your agency to move towards your values. Mm-hmm. It's not just motivation isn't just going to just distill upon you like 
<laughs> like P- Tinkerbell's pixie dust, just because yeah. now you have a value-driven goal, you still have to find that. You still have to choose every day right. to live in your value. Like I know a lot of people, including myself, say I don't have the motivation to do it. So I therefore will not do it or can't do it. And I learned pretty on, early on in my sports career is that motivation is um, discipline precedes motivation. Hmm. That motivation comes after discipline. Almost always. Yeah. And so if you want to find motivation, you want to live by your values, you first have to practice discipline. And so when it comes to the positive change and goal setting in your life or just positive movement in your life, you're going to have to practice discipline to a point to where it becomes habitual and the motivation is there. Yeah. Because discipline precedes motivation. Yeah. Motivation is like love in a sense, as in it's not a feeling, it's a decision or Mm -hmm. it's an action. It's, it's created, not found. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so you can't, you're of course you're going to watch like Rocky or <laughs> remember the Titans Yeah. movies like that, that'll pump you up and you'll feel so motivated. You'll feel this energy to go to the gym to very visceral, like yeah. right, to <laughs> improve yourself, to work on yourself. And then the next day, where's that feeling? It's gone. Or even 10 minutes later, gone because that's not motivation. Motivation is a decision. It's a choice. You still have to make that decision. It's not just going to work on itself. Yeah. You know? I live by the quote that I learned from a great man that our experience on earth is a lifelong curriculum of learning how to act and not be acted upon. I live by that every day. And not that I say that I am perfect when it comes to discipline because I'm definitely not. Not me. I, I, I can't stop with just one sleeve of Oreos. It's well, at least one and a half. I have no discipline there. <laughs> Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, that's, that's what we're here on earth to do. It's not to just find all the things that are preventing us from doing what we love. It's to find all the reasons to, to use the discipline to do the things that are most meaningful to us. Yeah. And, um, it's, that's a diff, that's easier said than done. I think this is probably the, e- the hardest thing when it comes to overcoming barriers is finding motivation. But if you stay anchored in your values, I think that motivation and that discipline is going to come a little bit easier because you know why you're doing it. Yeah. And that's what the R in the hard berries is all about is staying close to what matters most to you and being, first of all, being aware of it and knowing what matters most to you. Cause some people don't know what matters most to them and they just go into those socially compliant goals that we just talked about. The things that we think we need to do based off of culture or like magazines, social media, whatever it is you think you need to be doing this thing. And what you should be doing is doing a good self inventory of what you really care about and then going into stuff like that and finding some things you could do that are in line with your true values rather than having your values placed on you by a third party. Yeah. So that's remoteness from values. Love it. By the way, last week Zuko got fixed. He got neutered. And instead of putting a cone on his head, we put a pool noodle around his neck. (laughs) It's hilarious. And so he can't lick. But if you hear him scratching, he tries to scratch his ears and he just scratches the pool noodle. (laughs) <laughs> so when I knocked on the door to come into Enoch's house, we record at mm-hmm. Enoch's house and I was knocking on the door and he always comes to the window to look at me. Zuko does. And I saw it around his neck and I thought it was a mistake. Like, <laughs> how, what did he get into? <laughs> but then he comes out and he just prances along and it looks so funny. Like a nice necklace, dude. And he's like, he's kind of embarrassed right now. He knows we're talking about him because he's staring at me, but it looks great. It really yeah. does. It's actually my father, our father-in-law's idea. So. Shout out to Andy for the awesome pool noodle idea. It looks good, Zuko. It does look good. He feels powerful in it, too. He's, he doesn't get intimidated. It's like a Mayan um, power necklace or something. Like yeah, like it's like a like warrior or something. The necklaces they have in is it Africa where it extends their necks. Oh, yeah, like the cultural know? thing that, yeah. that makes their, stretches their vertebrae or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or it their, looks like that. Their, their spine. Yeah. Anyway, we he digress. <laughs> He's trying to jump up. No, you stay down. Thanks. Okay, now the last letter, which is D, is doubtful goals. Now, like we kind of just talked about as far as values go, when you have goals that aren't centered around your values, sure, you can go after them for some time, but they're not going to be sustainable, and you're going to start doubting yourself down the road as you work towards this goal because it's nothing you value. And so it's going to be really hard to sustain it. And this, this one's 
was more dependent on the previous three. It kind of encapsulates the whole acronym that when you when you don't stay stick to your when you don't stay close to your values and you're hooked to thoughts and when you're avoiding discomfort and all these things, you're going to be very doubtful in your ability to achieve your goals. And so the previous three words or phrases of the acronym kind of just accumulate in the third one. It creates doubt. And it could be its own thing. Like you could just start going into it and you just have self-doubt as yeah. a whole. Like you could just go into something and be a very doubtful person or someone with low self-esteem or just someone who has struggled with goals in the past for some of the reasons we've already talked about when it comes to the other parts of the acronym. But it comes from a lack of, of faith and compassion for yourself and your abilities to do things. And it could be based off of the things that you've done before in your life. You might have failed at some goals. Mm -hmm. But it's like a it's a cognitive distortion of sorts that you're doubtful of your ability to achieve these goals. You might be doubtful over your... Um, I, don't, I can't think of the word. You're doubtful of your ability to do anything. You just feel like you might be incompetent. Yeah. And, um, and that doubt is obviously linked to feelings of self-worth, also your values, because... Do I even care about this? But like I said, it's kind of like an accumulation of the other three parts of this acronym. Yeah, and I think, like Austin was saying, this just encapsulates everything and puts a bow on it, where when you're doubting yourself, this is a perfect time to practice self-compassion, you know, and to be patient with yourself as you go towards goals, as you experience barriers, you're going to be frustrated, and that's okay. It's totally normal. If you're not ever frustrated and you have a barrier, then you're either a psychopath or you're a robot. Mm. Mm. That's a good point. Or you're an animal. <laughs> like a dog or a single cell organism. <laughs> even even dogs. I mean, they get frustrated when they don't get their treat. That's, That's a true. Barrier. Or like when they are not able to do something they want to do, they, they, get, <laughs> they get frustrated. <laughs> yeah. It's funny to watch. Anyway, but just have, have patience with yourself. Okay, remember, we tend to overestimate ourselves in the short run mm -hmm. and underestimate ourselves in the long run. So start practicing compassion, start practicing patience with yourself, and take baby steps. That is such an overrated phrase right there, baby steps. But it's true, baby steps with everything and anything because that's how it's going to be sustainable is if you just take baby steps towards your values and have patience when you fall because you've over like we've talked about this before you've overcome a barrier like this already we all have and that was when we learned to walk sure we may have got up upset with ourselves at times but we'd continue to get up move forward take a little baby step and then we'd fall down but we try again we're resilient stand up take another step and maybe take another half step, then fall down. But over time, you learned how to walk. And so if you're saying, oh, I can never achieve my goals. I always doubt myself. I'm never patient with myself. I've never done anything. Start there. You've learned how to walk. So I think you can learn how to do anything. It just takes patience and baby steps. It's funny that you bring that up because Russ Harris uses that example in this part of the book. And he, he talks about how... Every person at some point in their life, more than likely, unless the few people that are unfortunately born with some type of disorder where their legs don't work or they don't have the muscles there, whatever it is, uh, most people learn how to walk yeah. or they learn how to talk or they learn how to understand language. And that just happens over time yeah. and make mistakes and you say funny things, you fall as a kid, you, um, you don't understand certain words and you have to learn and it's frustrating. But if you think about being a baby that just everything gets taken care of for you. Your food comes straight to you. People carry you everywhere. Life is so good. And you start learning how to walk. That is such a crazy thing that these teeny little balls of squishiness and cuteness. <laughs> Marshmallows. They just kind of teach themselves how to walk. And yeah. each one of you used to be a ball of squishiness and cuteness that taught yourself more or less how to walk just by watching your parents do it. So if you ever doubt your ability to do things that you want to do, just remember the fact that you, as a little marshmallow Michelin man, Michelin woman, <laughs> taught yourself how to just get up and start walking. Yeah. And so if you're doubting your ability to, to find discipline to do things and then therefore build motivation within yourself, always remember your cute little squishy self picking yourself up every time you fall. You probably don't remember learning how to walk because you, it's hard to process memories that little. Yeah. 
But if you could remember yourself, you would be so impressed with the how much effort it took and how frustrating it probably was, how discomforting it was. Yeah. But imagine how life would be if you couldn't walk. Yeah. And all the things that you can do because you can walk. Now turn that into some of the the goals that you have or the changes that you want to make for yourself. What would be possible if I made this change in my life? Why do I care about this? How would my life be different? And use that as your motivation to keep going. Because every person you've ever met or ever seen, no matter how much they have it put together or perceive or make it seem like they have it put together. That's mm-hmm. why social media is such a little Dickens. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's a killer. It's a, it's as good as it is. It's increasingly getting smaller and smaller, the good aspects of it. Yeah. Um, and my opinion, it's really driving a toxic comparison. And so when it comes to goal setting or goal progress, stay away from social media. Don't get your motivation or your comparisons from social media. We've talked about this before. The only person, the only thing you should compare yourself is who you were yesterday. Jordan Peterson. I'm not going to steal his quote. That's that's (laughs) him. But um, yeah, don't forget that you've done some of the hardest things anyone could ever do up to this point in your life. And so you can achieve the goals that you set out. It just might take a little bit more time and effort than you might be ready to do right now. Yeah. Don't forget, you're awesome. We love you very much and we're so grateful for your support that you give us. We really are. We see you. We notice you. We don't know who you are, but we do see you. We see what countries you're from. And it's just overwhelming, the support that we have and the listeners that that we have. We check our demographics and listeners. Like, we can, on Spotify, we can see who's listening. Not who. Like, we don't know your names, but, like, kind of the country you're from and stuff like that. And we love to see how much it's growing and it's getting to different people in different states and countries. And we pay close attention to that. And we love to see how much it's growing and the people all over the world are hearing this, even though it's not very often. Yeah. We love it and we get so pumped up by it. So thank you for listening. It really does mean the world. It's, we're just a couple of kids in college with a dream and that sounds really cheesy, <laughs> but that's what it is right now. Yeah. And we, uh, we really appreciate the effort you guys put in and being loyal, even if you're not loyal, even just listening to this right now as we're speaking. Yeah. It, it means a lot. It does. And we have some cool things coming down the pipe. So we're working on be it. Be ready. Get excited. Be pumped. We're going to just do different uh, kinds of episodes, and they're gonna actually going to be really fun. We're, we're excited about the, the content we're going to try to push out. Yeah. So get ready for that. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that follow button. I forget all the different kinds of buttons hit on the, the rate platforms. Button. Hit the DM button on Instagram if you have rate. questions. Rate. With a T. Rate. And t- rate. Yeah. So I thought you said, thought you said rape. For I a stutter a lot, and I mumble a lot. Shout out to speech impediments. but. <laughs> Yeah, rate it and reach out to us if you have questions, concerns, or ideas, because we'll take the ideas. Yeah, please. Anyway, have a great week. Taking us out is the one and only, the talented Danny D. What about, what about therapy? What about, what about therapy? What about, what about therapy? Yeah. What about, what about therapy? What about therapy? What about, what about therapy? Yeah. What about, what about therapy? What about, what about therapy? What about, what about therapy? What about, what about therapy?